So I'm teaching kitesurf since five years now, and I thought it's maybe a good idea to, to start to do spot reviews. First of all, where is this Lake Como? Oh wow, too much light now. Yeah, it's better like this. Uh, I'm sure you heard about Garda. It's just next door, so this is like the small brother of Garda Lake. And also the scenery is, is really like nice and charming. I think that's a good point. I like to kite in beautiful places, you know? <laughs> The place itself has uh, like four to five spots to start. The first one where I am right now is Gerald Ario. It has a nice grassy area behind me. It does the job, it's not great, you need some experience. I've seen so many guys struggling here just because you have to launch behind a building. Very smart, it's definitely like, it's, it's in the wind shadow. So yeah, it's the local surf club and he, they are regulating the the area to start from, so well done guys. Uh, the other one is just the opposite side, uh, it's called La Punta and the next to it there's Colico, both great, big field, easy, you land up on the beach if you cannot ride up in, but yeah, you better be a decent rider for this. There is two more in the middle of the lake, uh, Dervio on the east side and Cremia on the west side. Yeah, you can kite from one side to the other, beautiful, amazing. That's where the wind starts, so that's where the wind is the best and the strongest. Yeah, that's where we start teaching with the boat. Basically, when you go with the boat, you have 15 kilometers downwind in the front of you. That means you can kite for three hours without walking back a single step. So, I would say that's a really good point for beginners. Oh yeah, bad news for the Wind Guru Maestros. The Wind Guru doesn't work here because it's thermal wind, also the wind is funneled by the mountains, so there is a pretty strong venturi effect. There is no way Wind Group will predict any of these thermal days, when we're having most of the time 12 to 20 knots. But yeah, the good thing here, until it's sunny, it's going to be windy. So I'm mostly on the 12. And I like that, it's predictable. It's not a boosting place where you're gonna just, you know, make a hole in the sky, but it's good enough. Many wake style rider will enjoy this. It's good. Over there on that side of the lake, there is a shallow area, which is really flat. Most of my students are getting on the board in, in, on the second day. The better, better guys and girls getting on the board on the first day. And that's good. Something is missing, I have to admit. It's the beach lesson. Overall, it's a good place to, to learn. It's a good place to progress. It's not a good place to boost and go and, you know, break woo records. Then you better go to Cape Town. Yeah, there are no waves. Guess what? It's a lake. But uh, for riding, you know, strapless, though, it's just good. It's also foil heaven because 
like many times when the wind is like just 10 or 12 knots so you would need a 15 to, to you know have fun then the foil foil will just save the day i like here mid august is just not the greatest time like may end of may beginning of july man it's amazing we had like so many sessions on the night it's just crazy it was really really solid if you are into party well it's completely missing here uh, besides it's not ibiza i think it's a great place it's good if you're learning something new that requires space in kite surfing most of the thing requires space so the wind is reliable and tons of other things to do beside kite surf. So yeah, for me, this, this place is from five stars, like a four and a half. I hope you like this review, guys. I'm coming up with the next very soon. If you have any further questions about the spot, feel free to ask. I'm your man. See you later.